Hi, Grade 8. So this is the second lesson now on simultaneous equations. We're going to be looking at substitution method today. Um, don't forget to have the notes that I've given you last lesson, the lesson before, and in today's Teamy post to kind of follow through. Um, if I just first of all, I'll just tell you what to do today. So first thing to do, um, if you look at the Teamy post, is you can see that pretty much following the same structure as last lesson. We have obviously the introduction video, which we're doing now. Then as soon as you're ready, if you can just go to the two practice activities. If you are not sure what to do in those, then obviously we have the notes, which is the same document I gave you in the first lesson. And after, uh, in a minute, I'm gonna go through uh, three different types of examples with you uh, on the screen here. So like yesterday, or sorry, last week, um, you're going to do the practice 12 questions in your book. Answers again are on Teamy. And once you finish those, then try one of the two quizzes. Um, you've got a longer one, which is 10 questions, which has got four questions at the end that's slightly more challenging. That's this one here. And if you uh, just want to do the kind of consolidating mastery questions, they are here. Um, just make sure that you're using substitution method. I know it's tempting to use the method you've already done but you do need to know all three methods for this unit. So that's why we're splitting them up uh, like we have done. So if you're happy at this point, you've done this before, you're happy with substitution method or you've read through the notes in advance, then you can go now to the, the 12 questions and the uh, quizzes. If you want me to go through the examples, then please stay online and I'm just gonna go through them with you now. So solving using substitution. Basically, last time we were subtracting or adding to cancel out terms to get rid of an X or a Y because we have to have a single variable to be able to solve it. This time we're doing the same basic idea, except instead of adding or subtracting, we're going to do some rearrangement. And that's something we did in the first algebra unit. So let's just look at a first example here. We've got a green and a blue again to make it easy for me to refer to it. So you've got two equations here. I'm going to choose the first one because it's got a single y. It doesn't matter which one you do first or second, okay? Uh, X or y or whatever letters it is, a, b, c, all the way to z. But if you have one which has a single variable, either positive 1x or negative 1x, it makes it your life a lot easier. So don't. there's no advantage to choosing a more challenging equation to rearrange first. So we're going to do the first one. We're going to get that 5x eliminated, so we're left with just y equals making y the subject. So just like any other equation we're rearranging, we need to do the inverse. I want to get rid of this 5x. I'm going to subtract it from both sides, leaving me with a nice, simple, rearranged equation of y equals 21 minus 5x. Or, of course, if you prefer to put the x first, you could have y equals negative 5x plus 21. Once you've got this equation, any time we see y, we can just put this in instead. And that looks something like this. We take the y here, which we now know is equal to 21 minus 5x, and we just put in the 21 minus 5x, so the y is no longer there, we only have x's. What we can see if we just zoom in on this here is now we can expand. We keep the 3x the same, but we need to expand the bracket. So we get 42 minus 10x. We combine all the like terms. So the 3x minus the 10x gives us negative 7x. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that negative in a minute. We then need to subtract the 42. And this will leave us with just negative 7x equals negative 21. Then to get rid of the negative, we're going to divide both sides by the negative 7. If you don't like the negatives, you use your calculator. X is equal to three. Now, hopefully you remember doing the elimination method last week. Once we have a value of X or a value of Y or whatever variables you're using, the steps after this point are exactly the same for any method you use. The only thing that ever changes is the first step. After that, it's substitute one variable, substitute the other variable, and check that they both work. So I'm just going to go through those a little quicker today because we have already been through those. If you're still not sure about this step, I'd advise going back to the first video, which, is, which breaks this down into slower steps. 
So just like elimination, we're going to put y equals 6 in here, which if we put in 6, it gives us a nice, much more simple equation. We just now know that 5x, we take away the 6, is 5x must be worth 15. x is therefore worth, oops, x is worth 3. Um, once we know x is 3 and y is 6, we put them both into the second equation. So we get 9 and 12 is equal to 21, which we can see works. So, as I said, exactly the same steps 2 and 3 as elimination method. Okay, let's look at a slightly different example now. So we might also see an example where we have a single value of x, but it's negative. Okay, still the best one to choose. Okay, it's better than choosing the ones with the four and the three. All we need to do here, we take the equation, we looking at that x, that's what we want to rearrange for, but we want to make it positive. So simple solution, if we add just one x to both sides, we're gonna end up with just the four y over here. That's gonna give us 41, but we're gonna end up with a positive x. We can then subtract 41 from both sides. X on its own is equal to 4y minus 41. And now we have that single x on its own. Last time we did y, this time we're doing x. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Once we've got that, we can, oh, let's get another slide. We can substitute that in. We're doing the whole expression in a bracket to make sure that we don't miss anything. Really important that you're careful with your positives and negatives and that you substitute the whole thing. If we go back here, notice that I've done it in a bracket. Okay. So again, we're going to expand out the bracket, keep the 3y where it is. We get 12y minus 123. That's quite a large number, but that's okay. We combine the like terms, you get 15y. Minus 123 is 27. Add the 123 to both sides. If you don't like that, do it with the calculator. And then we can see that if 15y is 150, y is equal to 10. Again, done the first step. Substitute y in, substitute x in, substitute them both at the same time to check. Same steps every time. So y is 10, that goes in, so we get 4 times 10 minus x is 41. Now here you've got to be careful because it looks a bit confusing. It says 40 minus x is 41. And you're thinking, well, 41 is bigger than 40. How is it getting larger when I'm subtracting? But make sure that you subtract 40 from both sides, okay, which should give you negative x is equal to 1 which means that positive x is equal to negative 1. Again, be careful with your positives and negatives. So most mistakes at this point when there's a negative value of x or y is people missing that step and then everything after that goes wrong. So be careful with your positives and negatives. So putting both values in, we should, if it works properly, we should get three. And so we've got three of each. We've got 10 here. We've got negative one here. We can just check that works. We've got 30 plus negative three equals 27. And we can see that that works. Okay, the final example I'm gonna show you is very similar to the ones we've just done, but the numbers are slightly more awkward. We're gonna look at one that involves fractions. So here, we're going to choose to rearrange because 2, 3, 5, and 7 have no common factors. Yesterday, we looked at upscaling, where you can multiply all of one equation by something so that it equals one of the others. If we go back to our example, we can see 2, 3, 5, and 7. You can't multiply 2 by any, well, you can, but it's awkward, or 3, you'd have to multiply it by 7 thirds. It doesn't make nice, even common factors. So this is a good example of when substitution is the best method to use. I'm not saying you have to use substitution, but it's the easier of the two methods for this example. So 
in a similar way to upscaling, but kind of like downscaling, instead of multiplying to make them larger, I'm going to divide to make them smaller. If we look here, what I've done is said, well, let's divide everything by two. It will give us a fraction, but that's OK. OK, ignore that notification. Um, it gives us y on its own and then 3 over 2x, which we can subtract. We may end up with a fraction, but we've still got that y equals. So that means we can substitute that in. Now, when we substitute this in, this one looks a little bit confusing. So we'll just go through it in stages. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's easy to read. We put the whole bracket in here. Be careful, of course, with your fractions. When we do 1, 5 times 3 over 2, it's going to give us 15 over 2. We multiply the numerator, not the denominator. We can then tidy that up by saying, well, 15 over 2 plus 7. 7, of course, being 14 divided by 2. This is for just negative a half, which already is looking a lot tidier. Once we get to that point, we can subtract the 5 from both sides, leaving us with negative 1 over 6. And then negative a half is negative a sixth. Negative half x is negative a sixth. If you don't like that fraction division, you can't do that mentally or, or quickly with written out, don't forget you can use your calculator to help you. But you need to make sure that you're dividing negative a sixth by negative a half. The two negatives cancel out. And then we simplify the two over six to get one over three. Don't use the decimal. If you try and use the decimal, it will impact your other variable and you will get the answer wrong, even if just by a couple of hundredths uh, or a couple of thousandths. So you must use the fraction. So now we can substitute x as a third. Obviously, it goes in here. Nice, nicely, because of course, I've picked nice numbers. This question, three thirds make a whole. And then subtract the one from both sides to give you just the one here. And then y is equal to a half. Don't forget to substitute both values in. And here, I've made a common denominator to make checking the answer easier. So as you can see, for all of these methods, we need to get either a single x or a single y, making it the subject of the formula. And once you've done that, you can substitute it in and cancel out, leaving you with just either all x's or all y's. And then the, set, the steps after that, step two and three, are exactly the same. Take one value, put it into the one equation, take both values, put it into the other equation. Very important to remember, just like elimination, you have to use both equations. So for example, we just go back here, we rearrange to make y, the blue, which was the blue. We then put the rearranged blue into the green. We then took the value from the green and put it into the blue. Then we put both values into the green. So we have blue, so it goes like blue, green, blue, green, first, second, first, second. Don't just do it all into the same equation because then you're only proving one thing works, not simultaneous. So that's a basic introduction of how to use substitution method. If you want to go through any of those examples again, don't forget you can obviously replay this video. Also, the notes in the document I sent you in the first lesson and last lesson and reshared again this lesson have another couple of examples you can look through for substitution method. Once you're happy, go on to those 12 questions using substitution method each time. The quizzes are shorter today because this substitution method tends to take a bit longer to do. But don't forget, you've only got those 12 questions to do, plus the quizzes, and you've got the whole lesson to do that. So do show you're working and make sure it's very clear which equation you're rearranging. With the 12 questions in your book, obviously, I would like to see the working out, but that's for your book. The quizzes is what I'm going to be kind of checking that you've understood on. And by getting the answers right, hopefully that's showing me that you understand what it is you should be doing. So. I will be on the Google Meet link. Don't forget you've still got that in the remote learning document. So drop into that if you have any questions. And if not, then good luck with those. Use substitution method and replay this video if you need any help.